Hi everyone, my name is Heather and I'm the person behind Happy Puppy Truffles. And for today, for Thursday's video, what I thought I'd do is another uh, shkishi or kind of uh, design that you kind of lay out on a board for display purposes. You can use the same technique for making like greeting cards and things like that too. But I was trying to find some things that would be appropriate for the season right now. And I figured that there's, uh, you know, a lot of bugs out there in the world right now. So I thought we'd do a little design with a little couple of cicadas on a tree. Now I have one of the cicadas finished and I'll show you guys the technique I used. It's just a basic, simple technique to do those. And then I um, thought we'd add a few little leaves with that really simple leaf pattern from these papers that you see here. And then uh, for the... Uh, tree itself thought we'd use some really nice paper here that's got some good fibers in it so it kind of looks like it's actually um, bark in some ways so let me get my uh, board out here now like I said in the last video too it's all loud sorry these uh, sometimes can be found at craft arts and craft stores you might be able to find them online there um, or you can just use your own uh, like mat board and uh, use that as kind of a base uh, but this is what we're going to be using for the design it usually goes a long ways uh, this way so um, I've gone ahead and just really quick with my paper here this is some paper you you can probably easily find like some tissue paper that this has the nice fibers in it and actually to be honest doesn't fold very well because because there's these big pieces of chunks of uh, fiber inside the paper but it looks really cool so so I've got some of that really cool fibrous paper that I'm going to use for my tree and I've already kind of cut it down to be the right width here I mean length but I do want it to uh, have kind of a little jagged edge and you can kind of look at the width of everything and kind of say for your, for example here that because I know that I've made a cicada that's with a base of about 15 centimeters that I probably want to have about that width for the width of my tree. I just don't want big wings sticking off of the tree space because these guys tend to hang out on tree trunks that are really wide so not really narrow so I do really want a nice thick piece of tree here so I'm going to just kind of bring this down to about um, 15 centimeters so you can kind of just spot it. It doesn't have to be exact, but I am just going to fold up a little bit here and then try to tear along this edge. Now, this is fibrous paper and so it doesn't tear as good as you might like it to. You do want to just kind of give it a little gentle tug though and you don't want to put any big giant chunks of missing stuff in here if you can help it because the general shape of the tree you know, it's pretty a straight line. You just want a little jagged edge kind of looking for it. So I'm going to try to keep it as close to that little crease I've made. And just start, you know, really keep the pressure right at the point where you're tearing so that you don't wind up tearing more than you want to at a time. When you get to these parts where there's pieces of the fiber, just try your best to kind of tear as much as you can. I hit a little spot there where there's a bunch, so I'm just going to kind of turn this around here. And when you get to the spot where there is, like like I said, these big pieces of the fiber in the paper, for example, you can then uh, cut them and trim them down if you need to. I need to kind of trim this one, and then this one's sticking out funky too. But that should give me kind of a cool little funky edge then to the tree. Now, I only want to show one edge of the tree. I don't want to show two. I'm just going to imply that this is a really, really fat tree by kind of keeping things close to the side here. And then we can just put some glue and go ahead and get that secured down first and uh, give it a second to kind of dry too that way. And I always just use glue stick just because I think it tends to work pretty good, but you might have your own preference of which works better for you. Um, but I really want to focus on the edges, of course. That's where I really want a lot of glue to be. And then maybe just a little tiny bit in the middle here. But the big focus should really be that outside part. And you can choose which, uh, you know, side of the paper you prefer. I like this side here because I think 
shows off a little bit more of that fibrous part that I liked. So get that smoothed out as much as you can. So we get something that looks like this. So that's my tree. And uh, then what we can do from there is you can focus on the cicadas first. I have one cicada completed and again the uh, paper size I used for that was 15 by 15 centimeters um, and that would give me the size of the cicada, nice cute little size. And I'm making two of them and I'm using two sheets of paper when I make them because the paper I'm using is not double sided. And if you remember from the model and you can see from this, there's this little tiny accent area that's a different color. and um, I'm just using really natural ne neutral colors so that these guys kind of blend into the tree a little bit and not so st not stand out so much. Um, I used a nice piece of taunt paper for the base color here for both of these. And then I'm using some of these fibrous kind of thin papers that I had um, for the under color. Now, if you find that when you do this, this winds up being a little too thick and a little troublesome to fold, what you can do is just cut this the thin um, accent layer, uh, just cut it so that you have just a, a triangle part left over. And what I like to do actually is I like to first fold the entire thing and then go in and cut that part, take that out later. It helps keep it a little easier to fold. So what I could do here is I'm going to start off with both of those pieces tucked together and I want to go ahead and fold this into a big triangle. And then from there I'm going to take each of these sides and fold it towards the tip. Now there's a lot of paper here so you want to try to curl that around so that you get as nice of a clean edge as you can. Then with that tip pointing down I'm just going to go ahead and fold my wings out. I'm going to keep the crease right at the point and then fold down. Now the one I've made already had kind of more open wings. I made them out stand out a little farther. I'm going to make this a little a lot closer to the body. And you can do that by just making sure that the spot that you leave down here is more narrow or thicker. If you leave it more open then the wings are more open and you get more of a, a wide in general kind of uh, cicada. I'm going to keep mine in a little bit more on this one. So then I've got up here this layer, the top layer for this part that I'm going to fold down. And then I could take the other layer and just fold that down. And then you can choose here, of course, how much of that color you want to see. Now before folding the next step, what I can do is just kind of open things up. And remember this part, this is the half you want to keep right here. And this half back here I don't need. So I'm just going to kind of really quick, before I forget where everything was, trim down this triangle so that I'm only looking at the half that I need. And this is just a technique to kind of make the folding easier. If you're not having any problem keeping your two layers together and dealing with all that, you can just leave it the way it is, of course. But if you want to make it a little easier to fold, you can trim it down. So I've got that part trimmed down and I can just fold everything back the way it was again. Just keep everything. It should go pretty quickly here. Let me make sure my edges of my paper are in there right there. And then we're just taking down both of those layers, of course. Pulling that down. Then if I want, I want to just create kind of a little crease here so I can know where my center is so I can fold everything in half, just pinch real gently. And then look at the back side where I can then take that outer edge and fold it right into the center. And this is going to create the body. And you can tell on this one, like I said, this is going to have like a bit of a fatter body with the wings a little closer to the base. And there is a lot of paper here, so you really have to take some time to get some good creases. Smoosh that down so you get something like this. So I've got my two kind of little variants then of uh, the same cicada, just slight different differences in the folding so that the wings are a little closer. Uh, this strip is a little different width for each of them. That gives just a little bit of variety, which can kind of make it fun. Then, um, because this is a two-dimensional project and I do really want things to lay as flat as possible, I'm just going to go ahead really quick here, 
put some glue on the backs of these wings to try to keep this to lay flat and you can keep it kind of underneath something while you're working so that uh, it has a chance to sort of flatten out if you can. I'll try to put it underneath stuff here. So with the cicadas completed and kind of flattening out for a second, we can then look at how we can add a couple of leaves kind of from the top area up here to just create some depth to our tree. Um, generally, the cicadas are so high up in the tree that you probably won't see much of the grass growth necessarily, but um, I went ahead and made some just simple little leaves uh, from the really simple leaf tutorial and I just used a quarter size of paper, so I cut a piece of paper into fourths uh, so it's seven and a half by seven and a half centimeters, and then um, and this is uh, a, not a taunt paper, but kind of like it. It's a handmade paper actually. Um, but I just folded these really simple leaves, and I want to just kind of play around with look, putting them out here at any interval that I think looks good. And don't worry about what you've got going up here. We can we're going to cut that later, um, but we just want to first kind of just get an idea. Uh, the general way that I'm going to kind of lay things out. Now I don't want to put a lot of glue because I do kind of want to have this sort of effect that there's a uh, something underneath if you will a little bit. So I'm just going to put a tad bit of glue as I do this and this can be really just kind of up to you guys as you're doing it of what you think looks good. Uh, play around with things. There's no right or wrong way really at all. Um, I'm just doing this to try to create sort of the illusion of something there. And once you get to one of these that, uh, for example, I did this one already, and that's going to be pretty easy to cut away because it's right along the top there. But if you are dealing with one where you want to get it really close to the top up there, one thing you can do is line it up a little bit of where you can imagine you want it and then go ahead and just fold back right along that edge of where you're going to have it line up. Then go ahead and cut off whatever you have there on the side. And then from there you can add your glue to have it stick. And that kind of helps keep everything in good perspective for stuff. So I'll like, for example, do this one over here, and I really want it to be kind of right along that edge if I can. And in some cases, like this next one, I'm not going to need to trim anything because I'm going to have it just sticking out from underneath and it doesn't extend beyond the top at all. And the nice thing if you're using this glue, you can kind of play around with it and make it uh, match up the way you need it to here. So let's see here. I'm just going to put one like right here it looks like. And then one more here. So I've got sort of that greenery going there. And if you find that these little bits there are annoying, you can put some glue on them. Or if you leave this flat under a surface for a while, it will kind of work itself out. So that gives me kind of that nice tree quality there at the top. And then if we've got our little cicadas from before, they do kind of stand, tend to stay pretty straight on the surface here. 
and you can kind of play around with where you want each one to be. I'm just going to line them up really straight and simple on the tree. Put a bunch of glue on the back. Keep it as straight as you can there. I'm going to keep that one straight and maybe twist this guy a little. They do tend to stand on there, really, really kind of lined up with the tree though. I don't know why they do that either. It's kind of funny. <laughs> But that should kind of give you guys a finished little sort of decoration for this nice hot summer season. And uh, if you get a chance, you can kind of sign it or put an ink on or hunk on it like I did um, and have that for display. And then, like I said, you could also use this, though, as a fun kind of decorative piece for a card or something like that, too. Lots of different uses, but uh, that should give you the finished uh, shikishi or little design board here for our project for today. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time.